Here is the AMI Continental Jukebox. I've now got the Jukebox amp components all reassembled back into the unit. And I tried it with this external phono here before I got the mechanism working, and I found that the sound was kind of distorted. And I was kind of puzzled because I put all new capacitors in it, I made sure the bias supply was working properly. But then I found that these tubes here, or pretty much all the tubes, were original AMI tubes. Of course, they weren't made by AMI itself, they were made by CRCA here. But this really concerned me because jukeboxes, of course, would have been left on sometimes 24 hours a day, and this keeps the tubes burning all the time it's plugged in. Some types, like Wurlitzer, cut the 5U4 off in the standby mode and reduce the filament voltage because the 5U4 warms up in a few seconds. It's ready to go by the time the record is on the turntable. But this one keeps the tube filaments going constantly. And so I put those 6973s on the tube tester and they were just so weak. One of them didn't even register on the tube tester scale with any reading at all, with any emission. So I got Electroharmonic 6973s. They're a little bit shorter than the old 6973s, but I think they're a true 6973. I've heard of people trying to sub in some other types of tubes, like maybe 6CZ5 or something, but those other tubes don't quite measure up. Because I think a 6973 is almost like a 6L6 as far as power uh, capabilities. It really can handle a lot of power. So these are true 6973s. I've used them in the past, never had any trouble with them. So a retube with 16, new 6973s. And then I found that the, 5U, the old 5U4 had actually burned out. That tells you how, just how hard these tubes will work, because I'd never well, only once in my life have I seen a total 5U4 failure, and that was when the tube had gone, had got a leak in the envelope and it got air in it. But this 5U4 had just burned right out, no filament action at all. So we put in a new GE 5U4, and that got the amp going again. It's a complete, tu completely tube type system. Tube type preamp, tube type power amp. The later row jukeboxes, which are a descendant of this design, use a, a tube type power amp with 7868s. It's a very similar style of amp in the rows. They use the, the 7868s combined with a transistorized preamp. And we've got everything hooked back up, still need to clean up the wiring a little bit. Then looking at the record changer mechanism, First of all, there was a squealing noise when the carousel would rotate, and I found that I just needed to lubricate these bearings on the carousel belt, and that quit the squealing. Another problem was that it wouldn't make the correct selections. When I do even selections, it would be, or it was either even or odd, they would be one number off, and I thought, well, is it an alignment? Is it an alignment problem between this, this, uh, pin activation mechanism. But then I noticed that only only one part or one category of numbers was off. It was I can't remember which one it was. I think it was just the just the excuse me, just the odd. And I found that one of these arms had gotten bent. So it was contacting the wrong uh, pins. So I bent it back so it was straight and that fixed that problem. Now it's been kind of a while since I've given an update on the jukebox so I'm not sure what I had covered in the last uh, the last installment of the repair progress. I replaced all the 110 volt wiring. There's a power lead that goes up into this junction box here. My, right there is a junction box which supplies power to the gripper motor and to the turntable motor and the cable going into it was was really bad so you have to remove this junction box which contains two outlets and a relay and then run new cable into it I put new cables on the gripper motor new plugs, new cables 
and new wire and go into the uh, turntable motor. I put some wire nuts in here so that the turntable motor can be disconnected if need be. I had to cut the wires to, di to remove the turntable motor mechanism from the jukebox because it didn't have any means to disconnect it. Then I had to adjust all these switches so that it would run properly. And I've got the AMI manual here. Without the manual, I wouldn't have been able to do it. The final challenge in the repair process was setting up the tone arm height and the stylus height. The tone arm height is set by this screw back here. And when you screw it down in, it raises the tone arm height. And when you loosen it, it uh, lowers the tone arm height. This adjustment here is for the stylus height. So I had to very carefully adjust those so that the stylus would clear the gripper arm when it was uh, when the tone arm was pulled up off the record. And I need to do I've learned so much on this. I need to go back to the model K, which which is uh, South JK's, which we have at B Street Studio, and do their whole repair process on it because I. When I had been working on the Model K, I couldn't quite figure out some of these problems. But you have to adjust, you can adjust this so that the, so that this part of the tone arm mechanism just slightly clears the, uh, the cam. And there's a specification in the manual, but you need to do that while it's, while the tone arm is down in the play position. And then I just adjusted the stylus height so that the stylus would clear the uh, gripper arm and so that it would uh, ride on the record properly and give, give enough stylus height to play the record. So now let me, uh, let me try making a selection here. There's still some old paper caps in here that I need to replace. And as soon as uh, I'll replace those real soon, I'm just uh, they're still working okay for test purposes, but I don't want to leave those in there. And then of course I need to redo the whole ballast and lighting circuit, but that's that's a whole nother big project. But I'll I'll start work on that soon. Now let's try and make a selection. Hope this is the right one. Oh, I had to clean these selector discs or clean the circuit boards on these selection things because you'll notice that when, when the selection is put in those rotate around to give you complete the proper circuit and they were oxidized Would someone please hang that phone up? See, now it's adjusted so it doesn't scratch the record as it pulls off. That was happening before. Now we'll do the other, the other side. Clearance was just right. It's, it's just it just passes over with like a, not a millimeter to spare. So you got to be real precise in that adjustment. So there's the AMI jukebox. I've now got this mechanism working pretty good. It's got a bad volume control. I just got it rigged up with these alligator clip leads. So I need to find a new dual volume control for it. So I'll, uh, it's still got a lot of things that have to be fixed, but the most important parts, that is the record changer and the amp, are now working. 
Another thing I did was to put in a new Stanton uh, cartridge and stylus. 